When you go down to your waterway to uh, assess its health, uh, the first thing is to make sure that there are areas where you can get out and sample safely. If the banks are, are steep, you clearly don't want to be uh, falling into the waterway. If it's too fast or too swift, again, you don't really want to be getting in there and trying to sample. And also, that's not really where the ecological life is living. Most of it is in the stones on the edges of the waterways, where it's flowing continuously, but where it's not too deep or too swift. When it gets too deep or too swift, a lot of the animals actually get washed away just as we would get washed away if we try and go out there. So one of the key things is really to look at the amount of periphyton that's growing in your stream. That's the, the plant life that's growing on the stones. And a relatively easy way is to pick up a representative stone from your waterway and to run your thumb over the top of it. And if a high level of a large amount of algae builds up on your thumb, that would indicate that this waterway would have too much periphyton growing in it. And that might be as a result of a large amount of nutrients feeding into your waterway. In this case, you see that hardly any periphyton actually builds up on my thumb. So this indicates that the periphyton levels in this waterway are just right for the ecological health of the stream. The other contaminant that we have in many of the waterways in New Zealand is fine sediment, eroding off the land and it ends up in our waterways and that smothers all the habitat where the fish and the invertebrates are living. And so a simple test to see whether or not there is too much fine sediment in your waterway is simply to shuffle around in the substrate. You'll see that often the water will go a little bit murky. Hopefully that murkiness will uh, clear very quickly and that indicates that there's a little bit of fine sediment but not too much. If the water stays murky for extended periods of time then there's far too much fine sediment in your waterway to have a healthy ecology going on. One of the best ways to assess the health of a waterway is to actually look at what life is living in that waterway. It has to survive in those conditions for its lifetime and so it's clearly responding to any contaminants that might be coming down the stream and, and killing things. And so a relatively easy way is to go out and collect a sample with the little net, put it into a tray or an ice cream container, and have a look at the little insects and uh, other invertebrates that are swimming around in, the, in that sample. You can go down to uh, a really high level of uh, taxonomy and work out an MCI or even go for the Schmack kit and try and work out um, a, an exact characterization for the health of your waterway. But I actually think it's a lot better to just have a general look observe the animals in the tray and see whether they're swimming around and crawling around a lot. If they're really active, creepy crawly little bugs, then it's a relatively healthy stream. However, if what you collect is snails and worms and slimy things, then that indicates that the ecological health of that waterway is not so good and that it might be contaminated by nutrients or fine sediment or something else coming off the land. So when I go to a waterway, there are three key things that I look at to assess how healthy it is. You can look at the amount of periphyton that's growing on the stones, the, the slimy green stuff. You can look at how much fine sediment there is in the substrate by just shuffling around it in, in the stream bed. And then you can look at the invertebrates which are living in the stream itself and see whether or not they're, they're creepy crawlies or the slimy ones which indicate that the health of that waterway is not so good.